Welcome back to America Trends being broadcast from sunny Southern California into 32 million homes and counting. I'm Barry Nussbaum filling in tonight for Dr. Gina, who will be back shortly. Joining us tonight is J.J. Serbeck, uh, born in the former Belgian Congo, educated in Geneva, Switzerland, where he received a law degree from the University of Geneva with a specialization in international law. J.J. worked for the International Committee of the Red Cross, the creator of the Geneva Conventions, for 16 years before moving to the United States and becoming an American citizen. For the past seven years, he's been the executive director of an educational nonprofit called Teen, training and education about the Middle East. JJ, welcome. Great Thank to you. see you again. Thanks what do you me. make of this horror in Paris? Um, what is surprising in this is that so many uh, people were surprised and shocked. Uh, uh, it, it was coming. Uh, it was announced. Uh, ISIS or, and, and most of the fundamentalists made no bones about it. So um, it, it's kind of interesting that after Charlie Hebdo, the massacre over there, um, everything went sort of back to normal. Right, you know, we forgot about it We already. forgot about it in no time. And so uh, it, it shouldn't have been a surprise at all. It, it was bound to happen. So now that it's happened on a much bigger scale, you know, the most obvious question is, how could this have happened? What, what, what's behind a horror of this magnitude in the 21st century, in Paris of all places. Absolutely. Uh, the, the fundamental fact that I think people really need to understand, and even to this day after all these attacks by Muslim fanatics all over the world, a lot of people still do not understand one simple, simple thing. They are not like us. They have a different mindset, they have a different background, they have different rules, and that is not to demonize them, but just to acknowledge the facts. And you cannot deal with someone, you do not negotiate a contract with someone who, has, who plays by completely different rules. Right. And that is basically what we're dealing with. So you have people who uh, deal with us in many ways, but uh, in fact are not dealing with us in, in, the, in the way we assume they will. So even in Israel, where they should know better, you still have a portion of a population that believe that it is possible to make peace with the Palestinians because they take the view that the Palestinians are like them. We are making the same mistakes when you're talking about the fanatics. So we have to really understand that you have to start from scratch and understand where they're coming from and it's not where we are coming from. Our values are not their values. That's the most important well, you, factor. If you're right, and I think you are. I've read your writings for a very long time, um, and I advise our viewers to check him out. Uh, he's a prolific writer on this subject. It sounds like you don't have a lot of hope for uh, a peaceful hug and a high five and a kumbaya song between us and them. Not right away. It's going to take a long time. I think we really need to reassess how we are handling our welcoming. And this is the, the mistake that the West has been doing. Open the doors, have them, you know, come, come here uh, for a better life, which is nice, but with values that do not match ours at all. And uh, inevitably, at one point, there is a conflict. And when the conflict uh, uh, um, explodes, literally, no pun intended, uh, it becomes very, very violent. And that is what we're seeing in Europe, and it could happen here too. Well, let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. Our poll question tonight, JJ, is, could it happen here? ISIS released a video today absolutely guaranteeing that a target next on their list is going to be Washington, D.C. Are they here already? Could it happen? They are here already. Uh, and the, the FBI will tell you that. But what is really scary, especially in light of this new uh, decision by the president of bringing in Syrian refugees, quote unquote, it is very, very worrisome because the FBI uh, it itself admitted that they cannot monitor them all. So I've had discussions with people and, and they, you know, they tell me, oh no, don't worry about it because we're, we, we're, we're vetting them. We have uh, the structures in place, we can do it. Uh, no, the FBI says it's impossible. We're completely outmanned and outgunned. So this has, in order to stop this, first and foremost, we, can, we have to stop importing them as they are. Uh, to, to you, you don't want you don't want to let go of your compassion. I think it's really important. It's a fundamental American value, but. Uh, compassion leading to suicide makes no sense. Right. And this is what we're dealing with. So are you saying it could happen here, it will happen here? Uh, most likely, absolutely. Uh, uh, of a scale that we just saw in Paris? 
Uh, oh yeah, if not if not worse. I think uh, I've I've been predicting for years that there would be uh, blood in the streets in Europe uh, for years, and finally it happened. And unfortunately, I was I was correct, and it's going to happen here too. So we have to really do everything we can to prevent that from happening. But uh, your previous guest, Miha Danzig, was saying that Europe is full of uh, soft targets. Uh, we are too. Actually, we have a large number of very soft well, targets. Well, we're a very open, free society. Absolutely. Anyone can go anywhere. It's yep. part of uh, freedom of travel and association. So it sounds to me like the one solution, JJ, you're talking about is stop the insanity of 20,000 people coming in with absolutely no background checks, not even knowing who they are. Correct. But notwithstanding that, there's a hell of a lot of those guys here on American soil. Right. What do we do to change our lifestyle or our preventative measures so we don't have a Paris on the streets of Washington, D.C.? Well, to put it in a simple way, when you're at war, when your country is at war, you drop everything and you focus on that war. So that's really what needs to be done. We don't. What do we do? Oh, yeah, well, it's, it's a marginal problem, but I have other things to do. I have my business, I have my career, I have whatever. Uh, I don't want to think about it. That's really the attitude of most Americans. And in, instead, what we need is massive pressure from the population, which I think may come after Paris, um, to say to our, our leaders, people, get your act together. You're not protecting us. You're putting us in danger, as a matter of fact. And if there, is, uh, uh, if there are act, acts like that in the future, our leaders will have the blood of Americans on their hand because of their neglect. Because do, you, of do you feel that there's a certain culpability at the top, let's say, if we're not able to call it what it is? In other words, if Islamic fundamentalism uh, is manifest as terrorism and we call it well, an act of a madman or a murderous rampage or a violent crime, then we're not putting it in the category perhaps where it really belongs, which is a war that has started that we're not recognizing as a war. It is elementary. You cannot solve a problem that you have not identified. I mean, you're, you're groping in the dark. Oh, yeah, we're dealing with people, but we don't really know who they are and what they want. Uh, come on. And that starts at the very top. The problem is actually at the very top. The president refuses to use the word Muslim. And unfortunately, all of these people are Muslim. That does not mean that all Muslims are bad apples. There are just a very few very active, very dangerous bad apples that actually tar the Muslim community. And the Muslim community needs to wake up and realize that they are being put in a, in maybe even in danger because of these guys. They really have to distance themselves from the fanatics. And you don't see much of that. And okay, that is so, really problematic. So if, if it was the administration of President Serbik, what would you do? What is your executive decree to change the landscape? to change the attitude of the American people and to lead us into a safer environment. Real quick to wrap it up. Well, stop the uh, immigration right now. And, and until we have really sorted out who is willing to live by American values and standards, and then we'll, we'll discuss. Uh, uh, other than that, uh, absolutely do everything militarily possible to eliminate ISIS because they are the source of the problem. Got it. JJ, thanks so much for being with us. Really insightful, some really important stuff for us to think about.